Okay, so in statistics, you guys talk about, um, or we talk about, you know, uh, organizing data. So we talked about types of data and how to classify data, and then we talk about how to organize data. So this is a table called a frequency distribution table, and this is a type of table that organizes a set of data. Now, um, what this table represents is McDonald's lunch drive through service times. Whatever. Okay, so these are the times each car takes in the drive through in seconds, and this is what we call the frequency column, and I'll explain what that is in a second. But I want to talk about a lot of the different parts or the different pieces of the frequency table that you need to um, know. First thing is um, the classes, the number of classes. So in this example, um, notice that I have one, two, three, four, five different rows. So there's five different, you know, rows that represent a range of numbers, like this range of numbers, 75 to 124, and then 125 to 174, and so on. So I have one, two, three, four, five rows. That represents the number of classes. So, you know, in other words, make it, to make it very simple and, and just it, um, the classes are the number of rows. So in this example, I have six. Oh, sorry, I have five rows, right? So I have five classes. So in parentheses, is just for this example, okay? It can vary dependent on the frequency table. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about class width. So the class is basically, um, you know, how many of these we have, one, two, three, four, five. And the class width is how many numbers are in each of these range uh, ranges or intervals. So for a frequency table, there should be the same number of values in each class. So here's my first class, 75 to 124 is my first class. My second class is 125 to 174. My third class is 175 to 224. My fourth class, right, my fifth class. In each class, how many numbers are represented in that interval? So this is a particular frequency distribution table that has an interval of numbers in each class. Now, um, what some of you might do is say, well, <clears throat> to find the... Um, to find the, here, the calculator, to find the number of values in this class. Let's say I'm going to go 124 and I'm going to subtract 75. And I'm going to say, oh, well, there's 49 values in that first class. Um, I want you to notice in the second class, 174 minus 125 is also 49. And in the third class, 224 minus 175 is also 49. So, again, there should be the same number of values in each class. But... 49 is not the class width, okay? It's not the class width because this is very important. In each class, I have an interval of numbers. Now, I'm going, what this means is that I'm going from 75 to 124 inclusive. It's inclusive. Don't forget that it's inclusive. So what does that mean? That means that I am including... 75 and 124. I'm not only including um, the values in between, I'm including the outer values also, inclusive of outer values, okay? What I mean by that, inclusive of 75, inclusive of 124. This class says I'm going from 125 to 174, including 125, including 174. I'm going from 175 to 224, including 175, including 224, inclusive. So what you're going to do to find the class width is you're going to subtract the two values and then add one. Because I need to not only include the two, the values inside, I also need to include the values that are also outside. So for example, let's say my class was one to five. I want you to think about this. Now I'm, I'm including one, two, three, four, and five. If you count one and you count five, there are five values in this interval, right? I have one, two, three, four, and five. Now, if I were just saying from one to five, if I go five minus one, that means four. But this interval, if I'm saying including one and including five, has five values in it. If I go from two to seven, seven minus two is five. But if I say from two to seven, I'm including two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different values in this interval. I want you to be very careful when you're doing the class width of a frequency distribution table, right? Not only am I saying 
the values inside, I'm also saying the values here and here on the ends. Um, I'm going to say end values to make it a little bit more, I guess, clear. Inclusive of end values. So if my class was 1 to 5, even though 5 minus 1 is 4, because I'm including 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I have to actually have 5 numbers in that interval if it's inclusive. If I'm saying my class is from 2 to 7, 7 minus 2 is 5, but if I'm including 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, I actually have 6 values in this interval. Okay, these were just little examples to show you on the side what I mean by this. So even though 124 minus 75 is 49, don't forget to add that extra 1 to include that end. So therefore now for this example, my class width is 50. So for this example, my class width is 50. Okay, so I did the difference between the two and I added 1 to find the class width. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about what we call lower class limits. And I'm going to say LCL, capital LCL for short, lower class limits. I'm just going to circle them. These are all the values that are on the low end of each class, lower class limits. 75 is a lower class limit. I'm going to list them here. 125, 175, 225, and 275. These are my lower class limits. Okay, so then this should be easy. What are my upper class limits? And UCL for abbreviation, upper class limits. These are the upper class values. The high end, so 124, 174, 224, um, 274, and then 324. These are my upper class limits. Um, now, I want you to notice something, and I want you to think about this, 274 and 324. If you were to take the difference, meaning subtraction, of each of these values, you know, 125 minus 75, 175 minus 125, the difference between each of these values happens to be 50. Is that true for the upper class limits? 124, and one, you know, I'm adding 50 to each of them to get to the next one. Is that a coincidence? It is absolutely not a coincidence. Why? The class width is 50. So the difference between each of these class limits should also be 50. So that is a way to check and verify that certain things you do in a, in a frequency table are correct. The class width should be the same as the difference between each of these class limits. Okay, um, let me move this over here. I'm going to extend this table a little bit, and I'm going to talk about class midpoints. Class midpoints. So for the first class, so it, this is exactly what it sounds like. It is the midpoint of each class. Well, how do you find the middle between two numbers? To find the middle between any two numbers, you're going to take the um, sum of the two numbers and divide by two. It's basically the uh, average of the two. So for the first class, let's say 124 plus 75 and divide by two. Well, what is 124? I'll show you my work. Um, where's my calculator? I'll show you. 124 plus 75 divided by two gives me... 99.5. 99.5 is the first class midpoint. 99.5. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the second class. So I'm going to take 174 and add to that 125 and divide by 2. My second class midpoint is 149.5. Do the same thing for the third. 224 plus 175 divided by 2 is 199.5. And I want you to tell me if you see a pattern. Is there a pattern? You know, 149.5 minus 99.5 is 50. 199.5 minus 149.5 is 50. So is that a coincidence? No, because the class width is 50. So the difference between each of the class midpoints 
should also be the class width, which in this example is 50. So if I want to, instead of going, you know, 274 plus 225 divided by 2, I could just take 199.5 and add to that the class width 50 to get to the next class midpoint, 249.5. 249.5. Add to that another class width 50 to get to the next one, 299.5. And what I like to do sometimes is I'll find the first class midpoint by doing this and then adding the class width to each of those to get to the next class midpoint. And then verifying at the end, so 324 plus 275, verify that that last class midpoint is what it's supposed to be by doing it, you know, the old school way. So class midpoints, the values, um, you know, in the middle of each class. Uh, there's one more thing I need to talk about, and this is just, you know, I mean, this is literally just terminology when it comes to, um, when it comes to, um, what do you call it? Frequency table. Last thing I want to talk about, what color am I going to use? Purple. Okay, terminology, class boundaries, and these are also exactly what they sound like, class boundaries. So these are the values that like bound each class, um, the numbers used to, uh, to separate the classes. Um, so let me take this off. So what are the values on the outside of each class? Sometimes I like to see, you know, I like to show it, you know, first. Um, on the second class. So what I mean by that is, you know, what number is in between the upper class limit of the first class and the lower class limit of the second class? What number is between the two of those? Well, 124 and 125. You know, to get the number in between the two, you can add them. I mean, it's a very easy case, but I'll, I'll show you just in case. 124 plus 125 and then divide by 2. I get 124.5. 124.5 is the middle, I'm going to write it here, 124.5 is the number between 124 and 125. What number is in between 174 and 175? This um, upper class limit and this lower class limit, 174.5. So I say the class boundaries for the second class, those values that are on the outside of this class, are 124.5 and 174.5. What are the class boundaries for this class? I mean, the lower class boundary for this class oops, is 174.5. What's the upper class boundary for this class between 224 and 225? 224.5. So the class boundaries for the, second, uh, for the third class is 174.5 and 224.5. 224.5 and 274.5. 274.5. Now, here's, here's the thing. How do I determine the upper class boundary for the last class if there is no class um, underneath it? Well, you can imagine, you can imagine what the next lower class limit would be. You would imagine that 325 would be the lower class limit of the sixth class if it were to exist. So the upper class boundary, careful with my terminology, is 324.5. 124.5 is the upper class boundary for the first class. And what's the lower class boundary for the first class? Well, you would imagine that the upper class limit for this class, if it existed up here, would be 74. So the lower class boundary for this first class would be 74.5. So these are the values. If you look at it, what's the, what are the class boundaries for, this, for the fourth class? 224.5 and 274.5. These are the values on the outside, right, of that class. And these boundaries are equidistant of, from each of these class limits. So if I were to just list them, you know, without repeating them down here, 74.5, 124.5, 174 This is a 4 just in case. That's a 4. Right, 174.5. Um, 224.5, 274.5, 324.5. What do you notice? Again, 
what is the difference between each of these class boundaries? Well, again, from 74.5 to 124.5 is 50. 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50. Is it a coincidence? No. The difference between each of the class boundaries should be equal to the class width as well. These are all different ways to check and make sure that you're doing your frequency table correctly or whatever, okay, um, or analyzing it correctly. There should be things that are um, consistent and matching, okay? So these are called the class boundaries. All right, so we have a lot of terminology from this. There's one more thing I need to talk about. So <clears throat> we got the lower class limits, which are the lower values on each of the classes, the upper class limits, which are the values on the upper class, the class midpoints, the numbers in the middle of each class, and notice that I have the same number of class midpoints as classes. Five classes, five class midpoints. But one, two, three, four, five, six class boundaries. I have one more class boundary than number of classes because I'm including the outer ones as well. So be careful with that. I have the same number of classes and class midpoints, but I have, a, um, I have one more class boundary the number of classes. So if I were to have six classes, I would expect seven class boundaries. I would expect six class midpoints, depending on the frequency table, right? Okay, so what else are we talking about here? Class width, right? <clears throat> um, one more thing. Everything that we've been talking about has been this column on the frequency table. I have not even talked about the frequency column at all, and it's called a frequency distribution table. So obviously this column is extremely important. What does this column represent? So, can I add this down here? What is the frequency? So this is a very important term, obviously, because the table is named after this term. What is the frequency of the frequency distribution table? Frequency tells you um, the number of data values from your data set that lie um, within each class. So what does that mean? So I don't have the data set in front of me, do I? I don't have the list of numbers that represent this um, frequency table or that, the, um, that was used to create this frequency table. I don't have that. But I do know that there are 11 data values that are between 75 and 124 seconds inclusive. I know that there are 24 data values from the data set that are between 125 and 174 inclusive. I know that there are 10 data values in this interval. I know that there are three that are in this interval. There are two that are in this interval. The problem with the frequency table when I have intervals like this though, I don't know what they are. I don't know what the data values are. I can't relist the data set by looking at this table. I don't know what these actual 11 data values are. They're between 75 and 124, but are they 75, 76, 77, 78, 124? Are they all 124? Are they all 120? I don't know what they are unless I have the data set in front of me. So that is one um, you know, low point of a frequency table. Some frequency tables, they do have just one value here and they tell you the frequency, those you can actually repeat. But when we have classes like this, where we, um, we have intervals like this, I can't rewrite the data set unless I have it in front of me. I don't know how many, or I mean, I know how many, I don't know what these 10 data values are. I just know that they are, lie in this interval here. Um, the thing though, that I can determine by adding up this column here, use another color real quick. Yeah, let's go with yellow. The thing that I do know, if I add up this column, I can get the total number of data values from the data set. I do know how many are in the data set. So 11 plus 24. 11 <laughs> plus 24 plus 10 plus 3 plus 2 is 50. Now this is a coincidence, but I do know that the total number of data values in the data set is 50. I know that there are 50 total data, data values in the data set that this um, frequency table comes from. 
Now, that is a coincidence. This should not always match the class width. This is a coincidence, okay? The difference between, you know, the class midpoints and the lower class limits and the upper class limits should match the class width, but the number of data values does not have to match the class width. That is a coincidence for this example. This represents the total number of data values from a data set um, for this frequency table. So um, this is just the terminology. This is not creating the frequency table yet. This is just, you know, analyzing the table, and um, I'm able to ask a bunch of different questions based on this table. Um, and, but analyzing the table and talking about the terminology regarding a frequency distribution table. 